Here we are at part 4 of my Antikythera series. The 3D model is fully finished and available as an STL file set for you makers. It's beautiful. I'll spend most of this video explaining the parts to you and giving explanations on how it assembles. We'll explore the core and how to connect the parts to allow for freely moving dials. We'll examine the body and see how I engineered the pearlescent pieces as separate components, allowing for easier painting. This episode concludes with scaling the 3D model and test printing. This is a 3D printable kit. If you'd like to learn more, visit the website and links in the video description. Let's get cracking. All right, let me break down this core. First we have this compass that slides in there. Now in the file set, this compass is one piece like this. There's also an option, there's a, a subfolder that breaks it down. Separate this here a little bit. So let me show you how this separates. The dial, the star shape, that's a different color. I figured to make painting a little bit easier, I might make that a separate piece. That insets into this piece. Okay, so here is that, and that just slides right in there into the compass body. Okay, so that compass, one, two, three, four parts. Okay, let's get this compass out of our way. Okay, the core. We have this core cap. And if I show you underneath here, I, I engineered a lip, so it just sits right on top of that top of the, of the main core body. And how this assembles is this ring goes on after the core. And I want to show you these. These are the rails. So the, the way I figured this would work, since it has to be hollow inside here for that compass to slide in, these are separate tab rails, well, rail tabs. So you'll see that there's insets here, six of these. So you'll assemble this bottom to top. Okay, so let me get these out of the way. So you'll understand that when this assembles, you'll start at the bottom and work your way up. Let me just go ahead and show you the second arm. Let's keep this organized. So this arm is a couple of pieces and right now I have it ungrouped which is good so there's a, a rivet head probably you won't be using this rivet head you'll be using a pin into this wheel so that it rotates but just for aesthetic reasons I've got a rivet head on there then you've got this that separates from the wheel. And as you saw me do just right there, if you've got a pin through this, and then some kind of a, a little head on top of that, you'll be able to articulate this wheel. And this is off um, circle on purpose. I was looking at reference photos, and that little celestial wheel is not circular. It's, it's really roughly hewn. Okay, so that's the celestial arm three parts. Then we have the spiral arm. And if I can get in here, I can show you that there is one of those rail tabs that goes under here on both sides, there and there. And that is going to hold this spiral arm up 
off of that base flat part. And he just slides right over the core, just like that, that, that core pylon. And then this core, I can move it over here so we can see it better. This core is engineered onto this flat disc. So you can see the insets for those six rails. One piece. This will be an easy print on an FDM machine, on a resin machine. And there is a quick look at the core. Spiral arm. Celestial wheel, celestial arm. Rivet head. Rail tabs. Top arm. Cap. And the compass. And there you have your look at the core with moving dials. As an added bonus, I've got this key right here. This is detailed on the bottom as best I could from the reference shots. This thing pops down from the body of that compass. So this is a representation of that. This would be something maybe you would display on the side. So you can use this or not. It's just, it's in free with your kit. Let's have a look at this body. This is the body that has no attachments to it. This is what you would 3D print. And I'm gonna spin this for you so you can see that these side details are different on each side. Included in your STL file set is this crack map. It's gonna help you identify where those splits are in the body. So let me show you real quick how the crack map orients to this. We can see what's going on here. Okay, so the crack at the top orients there, the bottom is here. So you're gonna look when you, if you're gonna introduce cracks to this, on your physical 3D print, you're looking for these two designs. This star pattern, and then this one here. That's the bottom. So that is how your cracks will orient. Let's get that out of our way. And then what I want to do is just kind of look at this. So you can see it's blank here for the top pearl disc. The medium, uh, I mean the midway pearl disc is that blank channel right there and then blank at the bottom. So you can paint these three separately. One, two, three layers of that pearl disc. Let's spin this at a 90 angle so we can take a look at the underside. Same thing on the underside. The blank body has a channel here for that pearl ring. And then on top of that goes the uh, what am I calling that piece? Like the circular indicator ring will go on top of that pearl color. Let's have a look at the top of this body with the parts in place and I'll remove them. I'll unstack these from top to bottom. So here is your indicator ring. Here is your top pearl ring. I can zoom in here and you can see there's a little bit of a ridge between the bull glyph and the edge there for that ring just to kind of seat right in place. So you can paint that separately. The bottom, I mean the middle pearl is separated into two parts. During my animation I forgot to separate this. This guy I am finding is easier to print. This little ring here, this little fluted notched ring is easier to print with FDM compared to SLA. So I'd recommend that you print this in filament. It's a really tiny, thin ring. So that comes up. And then your middle pearl ring, separate piece, so you can paint it separately. So that is that pearl color. And then this dude is a gold color. And it's just gonna live right there, just that little raised part. Okay, and then working our way down, we have the core, I call this the core base plate in your file set. You'll see this is called the core base plate. So this is, again, 
You might want to print this in FDM. I did a test the other day and it looks really good in FDM. Okay, so there is your stack for the core base plate. Your ring and middle pearl ring. Your top pearl ring. And then finally, the indicator ring. The Antikythera bottom is even more simple than the top. It's only a few pieces. You've got your circular indicator ring, your top pearl ring, and the body itself. The rest of this body is gold, so I didn't separate this ring. That's just part of the body. Got that beautiful celestial design going on here. And there is a just a real quick look at that simple bottom. Very easy to assemble. This guy, just slightly smaller, but feels much more accurate to me. This one is 251 millimeters tall and 290 millimeters wide. Again, 3D printable on a CR10. And this one feels, this feels right to me. I am going to settle on this scale right here. This is my Cura slicer. I've loaded in a CR10 profile. So I'm gonna show you you can print this full scale on the CR10. Just go ahead and get to your rotation menu. Whoops, we don't want to flip it that way. So this is 290 sideways and only, I forgot what it was, like 252 or something this way. So you want to rotate this up. It's long axis. And there you go. That's kind of dramatic. I don't have to rotate it up as far as that. You can orient this model any way you choose. Oop, don't want to tilt it that way. But just so you can see that in one piece, this will print on a machine as small as the CR-10. And there is your look at the full set of parts for this Dial of Destiny, the Archimedes... Antikythera. This is part four of I don't know how many episodes because the next episode will probably be showing off the um, prints, the completed physical Antikythera. If you're interested in this 3D file or the physical kit down the road, uh, go ahead and uh, like and subscribe. Go check out my Facebook page, my website. And if you enjoy this content and want to be notified when the next material goes live, just be sure to hit that bell icon. I really appreciate your patronage. Thank you. This concludes Episode 4 of the Archimedes Dial. Future episodes will examine the physical parts, painting, and assembly. Thanks again for watching.